I'm Will Howard, and as you can hear and see, I'm at the Tuckahoe Steam and Gas Show. This is a fantastic opportunity that comes up. The big show is once a year. They have events here monthly. It's a big opportunity to come back and look at the start of the Industrial Revolution. We're with Todd Miller from York, Pennsylvania. And tell me about, uh, about your tractor here. Uh, it's a K1545 AB Farquhar, which was built in York, Pennsylvania in 1924. 1924, that must have been the year for the steam. When, when did they start building these? Uh, well, back in the late 18, mid to late 1800s. And which was the Industrial Re Revolution. Exactly. And steam drove everything back in those days. Pretty much, that's for sure. It was the miracle engine of the world. Pretty much until the gas engine came. That, that's, that's right. <laughs> but tell me, who started with the first steam engine? Where was it discovered? Was uh, it? I think the Case Corporation, the Case Company has the first steam engine. So, so, so the Americans? Exactly, yep. And uh, of course the locomotive, uh, the locomotive. Developed railroad. from that. Exactly. So the locomotive probably came first, exactly. right? And then they scaled it back to the steam the tractor. Steam tractor. Which took the place of the horse. Right. And uh, it was a lot easier to ride one of these than it was to walk behind a horse. I guess it was. Yeah. And how many horsepower is yours? Uh, it's rated at 45. 45. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now, it's, uh, it looks a lot different than the one we were looking at uh, earlier. T tell me the, the difference. Your wheels are on the side? Uh, we have extension rims on this, which makes the wheel wider, which gives you the ability to uh, go across muddy terrain have more a lot better than you would with a narrower tight wheel. We're with Eric Harvey, who is the show chairman with his yes. wife. Yes. And he's here all the way from Easton, Maryland. This is the 37th annual event? Yes, 37th annual show. Okay, tell, do the math for me. When what when did it start? Uh, what, this week or? No, no, in the 60s? years ago? 1973. 73. It was the original. Uh, the, show, the first show here was in 1974. Uh, but December 15th. 1973 is when the show was founded. That's great. Who was who was the founder? Uh, there was about 40 original charter members that got together and decided that they wanted to have a museum here in Talbot County, and that's what started the show. I think Lloyd Pullman was one of those people. Lloyd was one of the members. Uh, Alan Lovelace, uh, most of the Engel family from Caroline County. Um, not to leave anybody out, but there was there was 40 charter members originally that got together. Uh, decided to purchase this piece of property here and currently we have 60 acres of museum right here in Talbot County. It's amazing to see everything that's here. Tell me what's going on. Is, it, is this This you? is my steam tractor. This is an 1899 brick steam tractor built in Waynesboro, Pennsylvania. We acquired it about 12 years ago, restored it. Uh, it's powering a rock crusher and they're using the crushed rocks to put in the driveway. Uh, we had some rain here today and got some potholes. We're filling the potholes. This is what they would have done 100 years ago. And we're doing it the way they did it, demonstrating it for people. Did you come up with that, that idea today during the rainstorm? Well, it was sort of a necessity. It yes. sure was. It sure was. How many people uh, actually participate in this show and where do they come from? Well, we have members that come from all states. We have about 700 members. There's probably about 40 active members. But to put the show on, it takes a couple hundred people. Some are not even members. I'm just coming. Uh, we have members that come from Pennsylvania and some as far away as New Jersey, Florida, uh, every state. Some of the steam tractors you see around us come from Pennsylvania, Delaware. Uh, we truck them in for the guys. Uh, we also reciprocate. We take our steam engines to their show and help them put on the show. So the six dollars uh, was a very reasonable fee to get in. Does that go to, to you? That all goes to the club. We own our own grounds here. Uh, we own all the buildings, and we own several pieces of machinery. Um, we just recently restored a Rumley oil pool that's sitting up here in the collection. Uh, that's been apart since 1996, and uh, our shop restored that this year, and glad to have it back here. So you're active on the property here year-round, then, yeah, right? Yeah, there's something going on every month of the year. Uh, every month of the summer, there's at least one antique tractor pull. Museums are open at least one weekend a month. 
Um, and then, of course, this is a big annual show. And what is what is your website? Tuckahoesteam.org. Tuckahoesteam.org. That's, that's great. And I understand you had a major repair from the snowstorm last year here. Yeah, our, our crafts building was demolished on Valentine's Day. Uh, one of our members came up and was going to plow the snow for us and realized that the rafters were all split and notified as many of us as he could. We all got up here and got our machinery out of the building. Uh, unfortunately, there was a couple pieces that were damaged, um, but we got, got the building torn down, cleaned up, and the county worked with us as best they could. They let us get a permit and build a new one. We got it done and inspected on Tuesday. That's great. So, That's great. Let me ask you a little bit more about your uh, steam engine here. If, uh, what would it cost back in 1899? About $1,800. Um, we're very fortunate. This is a Frick steam engine. Uh, there's a Frick club, and a lot of the original paperwork, the blueprints, the documents are still available. Uh, the Frick company is still in business. Uh, over 150 years old. What are, they, what are they building today? Refrigeration equipment. Uh, still an international company. Uh, this engine went back to the factory for the 150th anniversary about three years ago, four years ago. And, uh, we love it. It's one of the smaller ones, but it's easy to haul around. It's, it's uh, pretty neat. We've had a lot of boiler work done to it, a lot of mechanical work done to it. And, uh, what is it running on? Is it running on wood? We'll burn wood or coal. Uh, right now it's burning coal. And uh, it generates the coal, generates the heat, and makes steam. And what's it worth today? Well, that's a good question. Um, our economic downturn has had an effect on the value of all these machines. Uh, I think probably somewhere in the neighborhood of twenty to $30,000. It's not that rare. There are a couple pieces here that are very rare that are worth considerably more. Well, thank you very much for putting on this show. It's great. How many people come out and attend this? On a normal year, uh, we can anticipate about ten to 15,000 spectators in our four-day show. That's great. Well, thank you so much for thank putting you. it on. We're with Irving King from uh, Dover, Delaware, yeah. and you guys came over to, there's, is there a, a large contingency of Amish here today? There is a few, of course, you know, the rain held them, held them off. Tell me about your tractor. Well, I bought it from, a, I seen it advertised in a, in a magazine out in Ohio, and I bought it and brought it home, and here it is. What's, a, what's one of these cost? Well, a couple years, of, I don't know, Ten or so years ago, I paid twelve for it, twelve thousand. And what what year is it? I don't even know. I mean, the, 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 uh, the, uh, usually, the, you know, there's numbers on it. We couldn't find no numbers, so we talked to the state about, you know, the boiler inspection. So they come up with a deal that we can go ahead and get it inspected if it passes certain tests. I see. Well, so it's, it's great to have you here with us today. We sure appreciate your coming. Yeah, you're welcome. We're with Alvin and Betty Sanger, and I understand you guys were w one of the original people that organized this. Well, uh, in 1973, when we bought the ground from Cecil, we stood out front here, we handed him the check, and as soon as he got the check for the down payment, I uh, unloaded my John Deere right off 50 there, and, and on the steel wheel John Deere, and we started through the woods going this way. They were crushed that way. We worked all that weekend, and that we had about an about a acre and a half by Sunday night of ground cleared off. And, uh, and we've been here ever since. This is, this is what ran America in 18, 18, late 1800s. And early 1900s. Yeah, early 1900s. And, and it's what, it's what uh, every factory had to have because if we didn't have electric uh, of, of such, of such amperage that could run, they didn't have electric motors that big either. It's amazing what a short time ago that was. I know. And how much has happened in the meantime from being walking on the moon to the jets and Absolutely. all the discoveries. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Absolutely. It is amazing. But this right now would still run America. And they, and they say, that, well, the reason that they don't use it is because, is because uh, you can't, it's not instant power. You've got to get the water warm, got to get the board going. It takes about an hour for the board to get the water uh, up to the temperature where it runs. All right, let the man that runs this come in an hour early. All right. We're here with Paul Martin, who is working very hard to keep this equipment well oiled. Can you tell me a little bit about it? 
This is the day of girl. That's right there. Upstate New York. We have two of them. They are twins. We have both of the farmers. That they run for estate water. And we also have the air compressor here that started both of them. It's not up yet. Things went down real bad. We have two years here. Okay. Two years to get to where it's at. Okay. Art Lyman owns the engine and is an absolute technician. He's very particular. And he got it. I can Today. tell. Thank you very much for taking time with us. We're here at the Rural Life Museum with Andy Cook and Joe Sechrist. Now you're the president and you're a founder here, is that correct? That's correct, That's correct yeah. Yes. All right, well tell me, tell me about, about this particular museum. Well, the museum was built in, in 1994 and it was mainly a group of us got together and just wanted to preserve some of the history on the Eastern Shore. So we got together and through a lot of donations and a lot of effort from from some of our members, and Joe was one of them. Got the donations together, and then we just put together um, history of the Eastern Shore, Maryland, like we have in the little old uh, the store here. This, this reminds is, me of Starch Store or Nevius Hardware, kind of a combination. Yeah, it's a combination, yes. But that's what the old stores were. They were uh, the general stores for the whole community, and everybody, you know, before people had, everybody had cars, they came into horse and buggies or whatever. And so the store had to have almost everything. I remember Slaughter's store in Cardova said had a sign that says, if we don't have it, we can order it for you. Right. And that's what they all were, you know. They, they were that way. And they had most everything. They had all the basics. They had a few clothes. And at Christmas time, they'd get a few toys. Not very many, but a few. Remembering life when I grew up in the 50s, you know, this, this, is, this is close. But this oh, yes. is actually from like the 1800s, well, 1900s? Yeah, probably. Yeah, we tried to, between the early 1900s, late 1800s, up to maybe like 1930. There's some, some items are a little bit later, but uh, that's what we tried to concentrate on that. Well, thank you very much for doing it. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. We're here with Jeff Greenblatt from Arnold, and you're uh, the, one of the head guys here, right? Uh, I try and keep the uh, cats in line. Yeah. <laughs> I just coordinate a little bit and try and keep things organized. How many We're, machines do you have here, and tell me about how, how spectacular it is. Um, yeah, I haven't counted lately, but we probably have about 20 machines on the floor here, and a number of other machines in uh, storage that we haven't brought uh, for display yet. And this is, this is the state-of-the-art technology of what year? Well, this, this machine right here dates to about 1885. The uh, large Bullard lathe that you looked at earlier is from 1920. So we span that period. And we have a couple of machines that are probably a little bit older than 1885 maybe as far back as the Civil War. So this was the, this was the explosion in the United States of the industrial period, right? From, from the Civil War to about 1900 was the, the golden age for machine tools. This is when, when America really grew. Yes, and the manufacturing capabilities really uh, just exploded. And this, uh, in terms term, historically, this, this took us into the First World War, and then we expanded dramatically uh, through the Second World War. Yes. Uh, by about uh, 1890, 1890 or so, the form of these machines, machine tools, was pretty well established. They grew in size and power and capability, uh, but the basic forms have remained pretty much unchanged. If you walked into a shop today, 
apart from the computer-controlled machines, you might see a lathe that you'd recognize that's quite similar to these. This one so, reminded me of the Baltimore News American. I was a reporter there back in the 1960s, and walking through the printing area was massive, gigantic, huge machines. And the News American probably had a machine shop buried somewhere. It did. That provided maintenance for those printing machines. Absolutely did. And we actually have a lathe that came from the News American back here in our work area. That's great. Uh, came to a, a fellow on the uh, Kent Island, and then we got it from him. That's great. I'm glad it's, it's represented here. Yeah. That's, and we don't know where these lathes might have come from originally. This machine behind you, this large uh, lathe, and probably a couple of our other machines came from the Cooner Manufacturing Company in Oxford. They made uh, small gas marine engines. Is that, is that from, Oxford, England? No, that's Oxford, Oxford down Maryland. the road here. Okay. From about uh, 1900 to 1920. Uh, we know that... This, you, don't, you don't think of Oxford as having manufacturing these days. No, Try but quiet town. Back, back in the... the uh, latter part of the 1800s, there were literally hundreds of manufacturers, small manufacturers of steam engines, small gas engines, machine tools, a very different environment than we have today where you have huge corporations, but only a few of them making heavy equipment. Uh, it was much more distributed. and. Uh, uh, a lot of places all over had a little company that employed maybe 20 people yep. and made whatever. Right. You know, farm equipment, uh, engines, uh, all kinds of things. Well, I'm very, very impressed with it, and thank you very much for volunteering your time. This is wonderful. You're very welcome. We appreciate your taking the, uh, the time to come and visit. Well, thank you very much. We can, I don't know if you want to see this run for a minute, but... Sure. Uh, so what is this machine? This is a lathe, and it makes cylindrical parts. And what we're doing now for a demonstration is just cutting a cylinder, making this a very accurate cylindrical uh, part. We can also do cut threads on a lathe, uh, anything from a bolt up to you know a very large part that might be threaded for uh, an engine or whatever. That's great. What era are these machines are from? Is this the Industrial around, Revolution? Around uh, the turn of the century, 1900, plus or minus 30, 40 years. And what's your most interesting machine you have here? The most interesting machine, of course, different people would say different things. Of course. Um, I think the vertical turret lathe is the one I'm interested in the most. It's a 14,000 pound machine that'll swing work 36 inches in diameter and about two feet long. The work can weigh probably as much as a ton or more. And it's basically used for turning and boring, just like a standard lathe, but for very heavy, short, large diameter pieces. This is Will Howard at the Tuckahoe Steam and Gas Show, signing out.